Girişimi finansmanı ve büyüme stratejileri konu başlığıyla devam ediyoruz. Bu oturumun konukları BDF Kurumsal Danışmanlık Yönetim Kurulu Başkanı Sayın Şezat Avedi ve Tayyip Yatırım Bankası Yönetim Danışmanı Sayın Furkan Ünal. Buyurunuz. Dear ladies, at first thank you very much for this participation. My name is Furkan Ünal. I am the executive advisor of Tayyip Bank Bahrain which is owned by Dubai Holding. Uh, I am here uh, just for business. Before two days, you were discussing and talking about uh, the entrepreneurship and other things. But in here, uh, we, with Shezat, we are going to talk about real businesses and how can we finance our businesses and what a private equity or venture capital funding institutions look for businesses for the entrepreneurs. This is very important, in my opinion, this is one of the most important issue for the entrepreneurs. Uh, before starting, uh, I would like to introduce a little bit myself. I have worked for Islamic Development Bank, World Bank, and other institutions for the projects. And also, uh, I am the founding partner of 724 group of companies with my brother. I think he's here or not, I think he's working hard. Uh, we are together, we have, this is project is a social responsibility project of us. Uh, we want to help support the women in all over the world. That's why we are here. Uh, and also I am the M&A advisor, and now I have started, uh, I'm starting one of the biggest investment bank as a deputy uh, general manager. I'm a young man, you see, uh, and I have deep experience in financing and other institutions, and also I'm a PhD candidate. Uh, my uh, friend, my colleague, and my brother, Shezat, uh, I think he is going to introduce himself after then, let's start. Okay, let's Thank brother. You. Thank you. Um, sorry, can you hear me? I'll, pro I'll try and speak up if you can. So my name is Shezad Abadi, and um, I'm, from, I'm from London. Uh, I've been working with Furkan for the past one, more year, more one, than one, year. one and a bit years um, with, the, with the bank that he was mentioning and, and uh, PDF, a corporate finance house. Um, we have looked at a, a, a lot of businesses in Turkey and found, tried to find ways of financing them. Few of them were startups, but a lot of the issues that went on within, within businesses, because obviously businesses develop from start up into, into more mature and then need additional financing in order to be able to grow. We saw a lot of the examples of uh, the difficulties that these banks, especially in these fast changing times when financing was becoming more difficult to get uh, and comp markets uh, around us, competition for them was growing but also demand in those markets was also falling. My background is that prior to uh, being here, I used to own a power station in the UK uh, we were the first, uh, myself and my colleague, we formed uh, one of the first private equity-backed um, uh, power companies and, in, in, and we had owned a power station, two power stations in South Wales. Uh, we sold that business in 2010. Uh, before that, I was uh, head of UK and Scandinavian structured products in, um, uh, for EDF, uh, a, the French state electricity company. And before that, uh, I was, uh, well, I'm a, a graduate in physics from Imperial College in London and uh, 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 ma married with four kids. Uh, can you tell us about your I situation? think he will not mention, but he is one of the best energy traders of the world, not on the region, I can easily say that. He is one of the best in all over the world. Uh, we are working together with lots of projects, uh, with terror organization and other things, we did lots of things. Uh, before starting the presentation, uh, uh, Turkish, I think Turkish participants will know, but I would like to first show you a video, which is a, a, was a bank's video, just for the entrepreneurship. Then let's see. The child is selling water.
grows because it is from the big, and you say that startups and it grows up. The venture capitalists, the bankers, the massive bankers like us, we always look at the uh, growth potential for all of the startup technologies. This is really very important for the uh, for the project owners who wants to find funds. Now, uh, I would like to inform a little bit what venture capitalists, if you know that, I would like to inform from our venture capitalists, and we are saying we must not bankers, what we are looking for. The chances are six in one million that an idea for a business eventually becomes a successful company. What do we call about that? I think, yeah, you're right. The, 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 the chances of becoming, there are so many traps along the way towards creating a successful business. Uh, and often you learn more, you learn a lot from failure, or one should learn a lot from failure, almost as, almost as much as one learns from success. In fact, I think uh, one, of the, one of the presentations that ran before that say that good sailors learn on choppy seas is that you learn through the difficult times how to manage your business. You try to avoid those mistakes again. Six out of one million sounds like really quite good odds for starting. I mean, it'd be a good encouragement to start a business. Yes. Uh, and fewer than 10% of the funded startups go public in the This means that most of the startups and the entrepreneurs cannot manage their business uh, very well. You see, first of all, uh, for going public means that if you are an institution, a building, you can uh, go public. That's why in most of the entrepreneurs can do it. That's why, uh, first of all, the entrepreneurs I would like to mention, because in the previous uh, businesses, everyone had not talked about the entrepreneurs, but the most important thing is entrepreneurs, not successful entrepreneurs, we need to discuss. Business plans are typically poor and are not well received by venture capitalists. Unfair advantage and sustainable competitive advantage are missing in business plans. Business plans in every uh, management practice you will learn about business plans. You need to write this one, this one, this one, everyone. But the important thing here, you need to prepare uh, this business plan for the investment bankers or venture capitalists or who you want to promote. This is very important. Because of this fact, uh, for example, most of the uh, institutions are looking at the project in different fields. But uh, in my opinion, as an investment banker, I am usually looking at the competitive advantage of a business. Why do I invest in this business? Or why do I fund this business? This is a really, very important question. All the entrepreneurs need to ask themselves, uh, what is my competitive advantage? For instance, you? Yeah, I, think that, I think that's right. I think you, business plans are very important to help you outline uh, your plans as you see going forward. What it does is it helps you to formulate your ideas, but also to examine and to look at the possible pitfalls that might be there on the way. It's, uh, it, for example, if you have a, if you have a, I'm talking, I'm Britain, so I'm talking pounds. If you had a hundred pounds. And you spent 90 pounds buying inventory, then you don't, you're only left with 10 pounds to carry on your costs. So you, and you have to think about cash flow, even though you bought it for the goods for 90 pounds and you think you could sell it for 180 pounds, you're still going to have to survive long enough to be able to make the sales. So cash flow is very important and business plans help define strategy, help define your, as, as Fulkan was saying, the competitive advantage that you have against your competitors, and also thinking about what will you do if they then take uh, measures to try and prevent you from getting into their business. If you have a really good idea, how do they stop you? Why is it that we're still using petrol today? Part of it is because the oil companies, which are very, very powerful, are finding ways to buy up companies that have good inventions. Slowly, after many years, they bring some of those efficiencies through. But most of the time, those businesses which had really good ideas have been bought up by, by uh, their competitors, believing that they had a competitive advantage, but they obviously wanted the market, the market wanted something different. Right. Uh, and also, uh, a venture capitalist finances only six out of every 1,000 business plans received each year. 
It doesn't mean that when you are sending a, a business plan to venture capitalists, it doesn't mean that they are going to invest. You need to uh, send these business plans more than maybe 100 investors. But one of them will uh, believe and one of them will invest. In. Uh, venture capitalist investors own 70%. Uh, this is not very important in my opinion. Uh, yes, this is really important. Uh, investors in venture capitalist pools aim to earn in excess of 22% each year on their money, about 8%. Uh, more than if they had invested in all stocks. This means that an investor uh, invests in an entrepreneur or organization. Why? Because only earn money, nothing else. Yeah, they don't like you, it doesn't matter. They only invest in for earning money. Yeah, no, I, as, you can see from, as you can see from this slide, what it's trying to, what it's trying to get give you is an idea as to what it is that they're looking for. They're looking for returns. They have to see returns either in the way of uh, your earnings. So if you manage to establish a, a, a buy or acquire a, a, a business that's generating income and that gives them a good return, they will probably back you. But the other thing that they're looking for is an exit, what they call an exit, so a sale. When they sell it, they hope to make 22%. That, that means that if they buy your, your business for 100, they have to, they're looking to sell it for 122 next year, or somewhere between 145, 150 the year after. So if they're looking for these, these gains, they, and that's going to come. Uh, I think this, the previous slide that Rukan had up there was they own 70% of the business. So they're getting you to do most of the work in order to produce the results for them. And that enables them to make these returns, which, as Rukan was saying, is you know, better than the S&P, and that's why people take some of their money that they're going to put in the stock market and instead decide to put it in businesses which are yet to be established. Yes, the 10% of the startups that succeed compensate for the other 90% of the venture capitalists in the portfolios. Uh, the venture capitalists, investment bankers, or private equity funds, uh, usually invest in more than maybe 100 independent projects. And uh, most of them get paid, but uh, maybe 10% here, it says 10% uh, get success. What does it mean? They are getting this risk. They are getting this risk to earn more. That's why, for example, 100 in 100 projects, think about it. For 1 million, there's a uh, fund, is 100 million, and they are investing 1 million projects. In total, they did 100 projects they are investing in. 90 projects fails and only 10 projects uh, earns money and this becomes Google, this becomes Facebook, this becomes the other uh, companies, Apple dollars. That's why uh, they are getting this risk for the private equity or the venture capitalists. Uh, yes, what are the problems of a startup? Yeah, this is really important. What are the problems? We, we started with my brother, he's here also. We, in a small room, in a so small room, we were discussing uh, each other. And uh, we were talking about what can we do, what can we do, uh, how can uh, we uh, enlarge our businesses and other things and other things. Then what happened? Uh, there's a brother of me also, we told, it's a professor. We were three of us, and he said, there is a small Davos, I would like to know. Why do you, there is a big event in Davos? Why is it in Davos? Why don't we, don't we have, I don't, I don't want to mention, but it's like that. Maybe there is a person here from there. But Davos is a village. We said that lots of the financial professions go there for a summit. Let's organize it in Istanbul. Let's tell it that Istanbul finance summit. Istanbul Finance, we are organizing the fourth one, and also one of the advisors boards is here also. We are organizing the fourth one, and it become one of the biggest events of the region. It was just an idea, and it became successful. That's why, uh, what in this project, or in this entrepreneurial action, what we did, we did a business plan. We have a competitor, we have also 
benchmarks to others and to others, and we prepare an accurate business plan. How can we sponsor ourselves? How can we fund the other things? How can we uh, market ourselves? The other things. That's why we started the business, the projects, with a business plan. You? Yeah, I think, uh, as, as um, Burkhan is saying, it, it's, 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 a, it's w as we were saying before, it also, it's very important to prepare a business plan. It's the way, I mean, you learn in school how to prepare an essay. You have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and you think about how to construct it. You tell someone what, what they want to know. You, 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 you try and summarize what you're going to tell them, then tell them what you're going to tell them, and then tell them again what you've just told them. And that's, and that's part of the thing of a business plan, is that it is, it is the document by which you're going to sell your business. And, and from that, it has to cover the questions that your investors are likely to ask. So it's important to also have an understanding of what your, what your investors are likely to be looking for. And many of them will be very different in the way that they approach an examination of your business. Uh, and an, accu an, an, an accurate business plan is very important because it covers the areas where you think that they will have questions. Risks are very, very important. I think as Burkhan was saying just before, a lot of the businesses that, that uh, investors invest into fail. It's, it's part of the rationale of the way that we build businesses. It produces people who have learned from failure and then produce more successful businesses, but also the, the successful businesses get, are, are very valuable and they are end, up, end up being sold for much more. Yes. Uh, one of the problem is also lack of vision and strategy. Uh, we have a product, for example, while we are looking as an uh, investment banker, while we are looking uh, for a company, we need to understand what's their vision, what's their strategy to sell their products. How can I, I'm okay, I'm investing in this company, but how can I get my uh, back? Yeah, that's why this is really important, how the lack of vision and strategy is one of the main problems mm -hmm. of a startup. Do you have? Yeah, I think, I, I, again, um, it's very important to, to, to have what the, in general, when people put money into businesses, it's to back a management team. And it's not, it, they may see the opportunity as being very great, but they need people who are going to be able to facilitate that opportunity into something successful, or at least protect them if there's not the success when they expect it. So, and what they need, therefore, is people with that vision and, a, and the capability of putting together an idea, being able to m compete against, the, uh, against those who are going to uh, oppose you, and hopefully, from that, produce a business that has some sustainability. No businesses last forever. There are many businesses, as uh, one lady was saying, I think, earlier, in the, there are many names that were very prominent out there, like Kodak, uh, from Bahrain, I can mention a company called Al Capita. There are a lot of financial institutions that are no longer there. They had a vision, they had a strategy, that strategy wasn't right for that particular time. But there is, only, there is a time period, and in that time period, you have to be able to make your investors money. Yes. Uh, capital problems and wrong cash management. That we really know this uh, yeah, problem. We really, <laughs> we really know this problem. <laughs> because in, uh, in our previous business, one of our pre uh, previous businesses, we did this problem. How did we solve it? Just for your information, just in case. We solved this problem with cutting the cost. It was very easy. Cutting the cost means uh, the top level's executive. Unfortunately, we, they left the company because of our uh, statements. And also uh, because of the Shezas leadership in the other things. And also we cut the cost. Then uh, we started again. It becomes also for you. In some days, uh, you can have problems in cash management. That's why this is very important. You need to manage your cash. For example, while we are investing as a private equity funds, while we are investing a company, we are looking at their balance, you know that. In the balance sheets, we are looking at the cash also, cash flows. What happened and what can be happen? Mm. This is really very important for the uh, investor side. Because that I mentioned previously, the most important thing for an investor is the return. The return. And the others are not important. Yeah, I, th I think I'd just like to, I'd, I'd just like to emphasize that 
uh, there's a saying in, uh, I think in Wall Street, if I remember, cash is king. At the end of it, everyone, everyone who has an asset, they may ascribe a value. You may have a house and you may say, oh, it's worth so much. But the reality is it's only worth that when someone pays for it. And at the end of it, the person who owns, owns the cash is the one who often dictates what's going to happen. And if you don't have cash in your business, you will have difficulties with everything. You will have to struggle to be able to find it. And you will find that those, again, those figures that, we're talk, that Fulkan was talking about where they make it, that, that out of 10% of, the, of their investments, they're making, uh, they're making their 22% return. They're making this because they are going to be really careful on the way that they invest their money. And they're going to say to you, no, you cannot have your fast car and you cannot have your luxury yacht just now. You make the money for us. When you have that money, maybe then you can spend it. But even then, they will hold, hold you very tight as investors. And I know this again, we've spoken about this. As investors, they will hold you very tight and they will say, sorry, we have no money. And you will say, but I'm going to fail. And they say, well then, it's your problem. And it will be your problem if you want to make your business survive. Right? Yes, another. Growth, but how? Uh, this is the last version of uh, our uh, presentation. Concentrate on your business. Uh, if you are selling glass, sell glass. And this is a portrait strategy, you know, baby. But uh, please concentrate on your business. Do not expand your business um, uh, without control. This is very important. You need to concentrate on your core business. It, they, uh, again, the, one of the things that you learn when you go to business school is how to speak management speak. And one of the things that comes out of this is that they say, stick to the knitting. Uh, uh, when you're doing knitting, don't go around looking at the TV or trying to read a book while you're doing your knitting. Focus on knitting because that's what you're going to do when you're going to do well. If, as Fulkan says, when you're doing the business, and, and there are many, many, many strategies which have led to business failure because they went into other businesses. There's a whole lot of Japanese businesses at the moment that diversified because they believed that the diversification was good and they lost their lead to uh, Korean companies. They lost their lead in many of the industries where they were the leading company. And out of that, they're paying now. The Pioneer is about to pioneer and shut down its plasma division. Uh, 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 Panasonic are about to shut it down. They are losing this to the lower cost competitors, people like the Koreans and the Chinese, who are producing just as good products for far less money than the late world labor cost. Uh, minimize your cost. Yes. For the entrepreneurs, for the startups, uh, I believe in that. Uh, if you are financing yourselves, you need to be thinking. Right? Because, uh, for example, if you're a startup, you don't need to go all the topics, you don't need to give uh, advertising all the uh, newspapers or something else. You don't need. First of all, you need to concentrate on your real core business. After that, please, it's really important for me. You need to be steady. Because uh, most of the entrepreneurs fail because of the financing problems. You have a limited mind. You need to be, you need to do your best. After getting out, yeah, you need, there's a pool of your money. You need to use your best. Otherwise, you will lose it. You will lose everything. We, have, we can see in the market, because we are always, as an investment like or a private fund, we are always looking at that. We see that lots of the companies fail because of that fact. You have a pool, you need to know how much you have. And you need to use your cash uh, with maximum balance, right? That's right. Uh, um, when, I, when I arrived in Bahrain, um, work to uh, start to work as a managing director of power and technologies in, in, uh, in Thailand Bank, uh, they found, you know, I kept saying, no, I'm not going to spend that, I'm not going to spend that. And they said, why are you not spending? If you don't spend, you're not going to earn. I said, no, first of all, we'll find out what it is that we need to spend on. We'll spend on that, but I'm not just going to waste money on taking six people in this place and not paying for it. 
And they asked me, why, why do you hold on to your money so tightly? We had a discussion, and later they found out that my, my parents were from my father's family from Yemen. They said, ah, the Yemenis, they always hold their money very tightly. But the Yemenis are also some of the best business people. They, if you will notice that many of the businesses in Saudi are Yemeni businesses. And again, you go to their houses, and their houses, even though you know, the Bin Laden houses are very different, but if you, the many of the houses of Yemeni businesses are very, very wealthy, but they live very simply. And they say that it's, the money is not for us, we're, we're only there as people who hold it in guardianship for, for others, that's all. So spending it is actually, uh, it's, it's a philosophical approach towards things, not just one of the economics. Yes, uh, and also a lot of leaderships, yes. Uh, as a venture capitalist, uh, we are also looking at uh, not only return, I say the return, but also the uh, who is the entrepreneur. Can he manage his business or she manages her business? This is the end of it, yes. uh, For the reality, for the reality, this is really important that uh, leadership uh, skills uh, needs to be approved by the investment bankers. Uh, you need to show it. You need to show with your balances. You need to show with your cash flow. I don't know. You need to show your position in the market. You need to show with your skills. You need to show with your persuasion skills. It doesn't matter. But you need to show it. Entrepreneurs are obviously people who are there to take risks. They, they have, what, as what I'm saying, they have a vision. And they have a strategy, they believe they have a vision, they have a strategy. And they're out to take some of those risks in order to be able to, to be able to put their idea out and hopefully make a business out of it. Or as a social entrepreneur, to do something valuable for their society. So it's not just about it's not just about what was like, but even in those situations, they in the social entrepreneurship, they will look to spend, uh, make sure that they are spending the least amount because they have to survive other people who will be able to give them I think the... You need leadership skills because as an entrepreneur, you have to manage your entire business. You have to be the finance director in the beginning or even later, and you have to be able to keep control of your finances. You have to be the person who demonstrates the, the, the direction that you're going to go. You have to be the human resources because you have to talk to people and manage them properly. You have to be the marketing director because you go out to new companies and go in. And that leadership is the thing that's going to be shining when you find that the business that you want is inside you and is, is wanting to get out there and you think that you can make it successful. Yes. I think uh, this was the last uh, this video, slide. Really? And there's a video. Uh, before video, if I click it, there will be video. <laughs> That's why. Uh, before the video, uh, I would like to inform that this is really important for the entrepreneurs that uh, there may be lots of issues, there may be lots of problems you have, and there will be lots of issues you have. You need to believe in that you can be successful. Women can be successful, in my opinion. They can do everything they want. It doesn't matter. They can, if they believe, they can do everything. I know from my mother, I know from my sister-in-law, and I know every ladies. That's why if they want, they can do everything. That's why uh, I want to show a leader. Yes, do you want can, to can I, can I, oh, if, I, if I may, there were, I, I remember two, two things I was just thinking about just now. One is that George Bush stood up when they were being very critical of the French and seeing that the French weren't doing very well in the sense and said, the French aren't very good at business because they have no word for entrepreneur, which is obviously, they, the word is a French word. But the other thing is, you have, there's, a, there's, a, there's a man, you have to know what you're looking for, uh, as Fulkan was saying. And there's a story about Hoja Nasruddin, I think people know about him over here in the Middle East, he's very famous. So he was, one day he was standing under, a, a, there was a street lamp at night, and he was standing under, under it looking around. And the people came up to him and said, Hoja, what, what are you, what, what's the matter? He said, I'm, I'm looking for, for something. What are you looking for? I'm looking for my key. So then they all join in and they're looking around, etc. And then one of them, after half an hour, one of them stands up and says, but where do you lose your key? He said, oh, I lost it in my house. So they said, Hoja, why are you looking over here? He said, I have no light in my house. I have it over here. <laughs> so you have, to know, you have to know what it is 
that you're looking for and be able to go out there and go and find it. You, and to find it, you have to know where to look for it. Yes. Uh, before uh, closing, I will uh, show a video about leadership. This, really, that I, this video, I really like it. That's why I would like to share with you. Mm. It's a little bit, uh, four minutes, something like that. Thank you very much again. Uh, uh, if the organization team accepts questions, we can. Otherwise, uh, the program continues. Will there be a question answer session? No. OK. Thank you very much again uh, for the organization team, for you, for participants, for Brother Shazad, on behalf of Brother Shazad, if thank you, you accept. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for everyone. Uh, in the last video, I saw this sentence. Leaders see the relations, leaders see the within. It means that all the women are leaders, in my opinion. Thank you very much. Uh, God bless. Konuşmacılarımıza çok teşekkür ediyoruz ama onları bir yere göndermiyoruz çünkü plaketlerini vereceğiz. Plaketlerini vermek üzere Uluslararası Kadın Girişimciler Forumu Danışma Kurulu üyesi ve 724 Şirketler Grubu Yönetim Kurulu Başkanı Ömer Faruk Ünal'ı davet ediyorum.
PDF Kurumsal Danışmanlık Yönetim Kurulu Başkanı Sayın Şezat Abedi'ye plaketini sunuyoruz. Tayyip Yatırım Bankası Yönetim Danışmanı Sayın Furkan Ünal'a plaketini sunuyoruz. Değerli katılımcılarımıza teşekkür ediyoruz. Sizlerle bir 15 dakikalık kahve molası vereceğiz. Kahve molasının ardından sosyal girişimcilik üzerine konuşuyor olacağız. Evet.